uh, it was used to describe a, spe- a particular subset of, of individuals in society who, who were, like I said, the, you, if you said dude, you, 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 you conjured a picture of a certain person. So that's why I disagree with what he was saying because it's, it's not quite that. But I do agree with the fact that, um, let's see if I can see what I kept. And, and that way, Kiesling adds bro um, has become much more productive than other words like man or buddy. And when most people use it, they are doing so with a specific intent. Um, in general, I suspect that anyone using bro knows what they are doing and why, which is, I don't know why you would assume that, and moreover, taking a stance toward the terms and the culture. Yeah, and I mean, and that's, that's pretty much it for, 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 how, for how bro really happened. I mean, we, of course, we have to mention the, the, the fraternities and that whole, you know, bro culture idea and how it goes from bro and, you know, all, all, all that stuff. But I think it all kind of happened pretty organically with the word bro. To me, it's the word dude that um is has had more of a wild ride as far as you look at it for the past couple hundred years and that is how dude and bro happened and now it's time for the roundup the roundup the roundup and we're gonna round it up the word brother has been around for at least 1500 years the word bro didn't start to become separate from the word brother until around the 20th century Dude is derived from the doodle, as in Yankee Doodle Dandy, and dude was used to describe well-dressed men in the late 19th and early 20th century. Things I didn't know before, and now I know them. Never heard of these things. What are they? So, for the things I didn't know before, um, I actually didn't have that many that really came across my, uh, my desk today uh, that were like, oh my gosh, you know, but I, what I thought I would do in place of that, because there are so many different broisms out there, I thought I would lay a couple broisms on you guys and define them for you real fast before we um, hop to the next thing. And so we got, uh, what do we got here? We got a, a bro active, which is someone who is extremely helpful to another fellow bro. We have a, a, a Broasis, which is the local bar or cafe where bros meet or hang out. Um, let's see, we have, a, we have a, 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 a Brobalization, which is the globalization of bros. We have a, a, a Brobituary, which is the announcement of a passing of a fellow bro. So you get sad. Uh, we have a Brobot, right? He's an emotionless bro. He's a bro that is always calling other bros bro. Um, a Brocasion, which is anything like an anniversary or a bro special event. Let's see. We have a this. This is nice. We have a we have a, a Broda, which is usually an older, wiser, and more experienced bro. You know, like your Yoda, just your Broda. Uh, there's a Broem, which is a poem written in bro's language. Only a couple more. There's a long list. I'm just picking the the ones out that I that I think are just ridiculous. Uh, let's see. One, maybe one or two more. They have brolicious, which is anything that is just, just, you know, of a bro nature. It's just brolicious. And then uh, one more. We have a broligarchy, which is a small group of bros that control or patrol an area or run a surf break. I feel like if you live in any sort of bro culture whatsoever, you, you know where, where your broligarchies are. All right. All right. That was another episode of How Did That Happen? HDTH. Uh, glad we were able to get another one in the books. Looking at episode forty coming up on the horizon. After that, uh, this is gonna this is gonna come out on Labor Day, so this is, this is technically a Labor Day episode. So because of that, I will give you uh, one fun fact about Labor Day before we get out of here. I looked up a couple of them, and most of them I didn't think were that fun. And this one, you can decide if it's fun at all, either. But so we got uh, Labor Day is the unofficial end of hot dog season. Oh, that sounds sad. So the National Hot Dog and Sausage Council, which I did not know existed until right this very moment, the National Hot Dog and Sausage Council, I need to put in an application, says that between Memorial Day and Labor Day, Americans will eat 7 billion hot dogs. 7 billion. I want you to let that, let that number sink in. There's, that means Americans who make up maybe what? I don't even know the percentage, but there's what, maybe 400 million Americans in the whole world? will eat one hot dog for every person on this entire planet between Memorial Day and Labor Day. That, what I get from that is Americans go in. I know I've had my fair share. I've definitely contributed to this year's 7 billion. Um, And if you want, on the Twitter page, if you're still listening out there, comment on how many hot dogs you've contributed to America's 7 billion hot dogs from May to August. It's just like sometimes 
you're just like america it doesn't let you down uh but until next time guys thanks for pressing play see you next week